Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Metastellar, Metastellar YouTube channel. My name is Maria Korolov, and I'm the editor here at Metastellar. Today, we're talking about the top 10 free science fiction and fantasy books on Amazon. We do this every Friday. So if you want to get some free weekend reading, this is the show you want to subscribe to. Um, so if you like this kind of content, subscribe, like, all those, all those things. Uh, so today, um, uh, uh, me, our uh, reviews editor, Amir Lutfi, and our news editor, Alex Korolov, read the first, ten, first three chapters of each of the books on the, on the top 10 list. And uh, we wrote a long re review. The article is linked in the description box below, as are all the books. Today's list has... Um, all kinds of good stuff, um, including a uh, post-apocalyptic dystopia. Okay, so maybe uh, putting it um, as, as good stuff, maybe uh, like st stretching it a little bit. Uh, but we also have uh, uh, a lot of other stuff on the list, including um, murderous creepy mermaids, um, grim reapers, sexy aliens, and a 6,000-year-old werewolf named Cain. And yeah, he is that Cain. All right. So um, for those who are new to our channel, uh, Metastellar is an online magazine of speculative fiction. All the content is always free to our readers, and we pay our authors. Uh, and we are able to pay them thanks to the kind support of our Patreon contributors. Um, the entire editorial staff, including myself, we all work for free. Uh, we publish original short fiction, as well as reprints, excerpts, essays, and lots and lots of book reviews like this one. And uh, if you want to support our community, um, the link to the Patreon page is in the description box below. And if you'd like to join us, please email me. We're always looking for volunteers, copy editors, and of course, you can be one of the hundreds of people who write uh, who write science fiction and submit short stories to the magazine. So we'd love to have you. All right, so let's get into the books. Um, and I have pictures of them queued up. Here's the first one. Ashes of the Fall by Nicholas Eric, the first of three books in the Revenants trilogy which is a post-apocalyptic sci-fi series. The other books are $4 each, and the series is not in Kindle Unlimited. Kindle Unlimited, if you don't know, you pay 10 bucks a month and you read all the books you want. A lot of books are in Kindle Unlimited. Um, I recently checked the top 100 paid bestsellers on Amazon in the science fiction category, and the majority of them were in Kindle Unlimited, including all the Harry Potter books. It is a great deal if you read more than a couple of books a month, or if you buy more than a couple of books a month. If you read them on in the, in the library, then don't worry about it. Okay, so um, Alex read this book, and he says that he would recommend it to people who are interested in high technology, post-apocalyptic sci-fi stories. So it said sometime in the future. He said he wasn't really clear on how far in the future. Could be a few decades or maybe even a century. Um, and the, the protagonist is Luke, and he has to sneak into New Manhattan, which is heavily monitored. It doesn't allow people to enter if they have criminal records. And it seems that Luke has a criminal record. But he got a message from his brother, whom he hasn't seen in years. So he manages to get into the city and get to his brother's apartment, and then things go like go pretty pretty far south really quickly. So he says that he found the story to be fast paced and exciting right from the start, and the U.S. seems to be controlled by a totalitarian government with access to advanced technology, and they use this technology to monitor and control its citizens. Meanwhile, a big natural disaster is on the brink of occurring, and it's going to change everything for this dystopian society. So I'm not a fan of dystopias. Um, I think it's too close to real life for me to enjoy. Um, but a lot of people do. We usually have 
at least one, sometimes more dystopian books on this list every single Friday. So I guess people can't get enough of bad news. Uh, I don't know. But if you're one of those people, here's a free book. Um, and the next book is, there we go, The Ray's Incident by Brianna Morgan. It's a standalone novel of fantastic horror. Uh, so we don't get a lot of standalones on this top 10 free list. The reason is that because authors and publishers um, often promote uh, book series by making the first book free once in a while. So that you read the first book, you get into it, and then you buy the rest of the books in the series. And it doesn't make much sense to make a standalone book free, because if you like it, then what are you going to do? Uh, but in this particular case, if you like this book, the author has other books in the same genre up on her Amazon author page. And I have a link to that page in the article. Um, so if you click through the full article, you'll get a lot more of the, the links to the series and all this other stuff. So this is a horror book. I am not the target audience for this book. I don't want to pay money to be scared. Or in this case, it's free, so not pay money, but still get scared. So I don't want to do that. I, I want to be happy after I read a book, not depressed. So, um, but nobody else wanted to read this book. So uh, I guess it's me who was reading it. Uh, and I, I don't usually read the copyright pages of books, but for some reason I, I read the copyright page and this sentence jumped out at me. It was a disclaimer, a trigger warning. And it said that the book contains scenes of graphic violence, including but not limited to dismemberment, disembowelment, stabbing, drowning, and murder. And it also warns about divorce, infidelity, disability, and child death. So yeah, like there, there's stuff in store ahead. Okay. So um, uh, I'm a hy hypocrite. I like my death and this mop, this bowelment to be light and fun and exciting, kind of like a, a Marvel movie. That I love that. Um, I don't want to feel the emotional pain of the victims. That just takes all the joy out of it. So yeah. So maybe I should talk to somebody about that. But anyway, um, okay, I, I started reading the book. So it starts out with Andy, who's a cop. Uh, she's a police sergeant. And she's working uh, on a case about petty theft. When her dad, the police chief, calls her in, and he's reassigning her to a murder investigation. And it's not clear why he did that. He doesn't really explain it because she's not qualified. She doesn't have any murder investigation experience. And there's other people in the department who do. So she's a little concerned about this, but he's like, oh, you can handle it. Trust me, you'll do fine. Which, you know, sounds odd, but I, I didn't read far enough to, to know why. Um, so in the next chapter, uh, oh, uh, so, so she starts doing the investigation and she walks into the interview room and she meets Liv, who looks like she's been attacked. And she's uh, changed clothes. They put her into some lost and found clothing they had at the police station. And she looks like she was like really banged up. Um, and um, the police officer, Andy, offers to take her to the hospital, but the, Liv's like, no, no, I want to tell you what happened. So Liv starts telling Andy what happened. And the next chapter, we switch to Liv's point of view. So uh, the day before, she and three of her friends went out into the forest to abandon to an abandoned bunker to tape an episode of a show. So Liv's been working with this crew for a while, and they film like creepy stuff, apparently. So uh, she and another woman are uh, camera operators, and then there's two guys. One of them has a Geiger counter, and they're going into an old military base. Um, that's been rumored to have to be the site of occult ceremonies or have mutated animals or have radioactive waste. And the base is flooded. So the four of them get onto rafts and kind of start moving, rowing their way into, into this flooded bunker. And then Liv sees a light in the water and 
it's a mermaid. Um, and the mermaid is a creepy mermaid, like pale white with black lips and black hair and creepy eyes and uh, pointing sharpened teeth. And um, two more mermaids appear and they, and they can talk and they talk to uh, the crew and they convince the crew to follow them deeper into the bunker, which seems very ominous and creepy. So I was like, okay, yeah, I'm done. Uh, but that gives you kind of a sense of the book. Creepy, horrible stuff happening uh, up further in the future. So, but I guess Liv makes it out of this bunker, but you don't know if anybody else does. All right, next we have a box set, Graveyard Guardians. The first three of seven books in the Graveyard Guardians urban fantasy series plus a prequel, prequel novella. The other books are $5 each and the series is not in Kindle Unlimited. So, um, so I'm not a fan of romance. And so when I started reading, I immediately saw that there were three point of view characters in this book, two guys and a girl, which immediately worries me because in urban fantasy, if you get point of view characters, they end up together. And if there's more than two point of view characters, they still end up together. So um, I was a little, little off put by this because two of the main characters are huge jerks. This is Jack and Aiden. They are reapers. So that means that they suck the souls out of people. And they try not to suck too much of a soul out of people because they don't want to leave dead bodies all over the place and draw attention. But they love hanging around graveyards because they can just drink up that whole soul of the recently departed and uh, keep them from moving on to whatever they're supposed to move on to. So not the usual kind of Grim Reaper that you see in urban fantasy where the Reaper helps people pass on to the next stage. No, these are just soul suckers, quite literally. And Jack in particular is just such a bad guy. He he sleeps around with women. He's lazy. He's, he's whiny. Uh, he's rude. He drinks too much. And not in a fun way, you know, it just, just like uh, he's attractive and well endowed, which we find out in the very first scene of the book. It starts right out with very explicit sex. So just a warning. Uh, but he doesn't even have any skills in bed. So if the female protagonist ends up with him, I feel very sorry for her. Um, but So the female protagonist, her name is Lucy. She's the seventh child and she's a keeper. So the keepers protect souls of the recently departed. So they also hang around graveyards and they fight off the reapers. So it's a old centuries old conflict between the reapers and the keepers. And she's a keeper. Uh, her father just died and she is uh, now uh, going to become the focus of a, of a prophecy that she will destroy the Reapers. And the Reapers heard about this prophecy and they send Jack, that lazy jerk, to kill her. And the reason why they send Jack is because his parents are emperors of the Reapers and uh, her mom wants her, him to do this one thing for them. And he's whining about it and procrastinating about it. And he's like, well, there's there's a funeral here. There's too many keepers. I'll, I'll, I'll wait and I'll kill her later. So his mom sends somebody else to help him, Aiden, another reaper. And we get his point of view too. And he's as much of a jerk as uh, Jack, but he's not as blatantly obvious about it. So the empress likes him better. So they come to this small town uh, where the funeral has just been held and Lucy's dad is, his soul is still hanging around the cemetery. So um, the reapers are going to want to suck his soul, but mostly they want to kill Lucy. 
And uh, so if, if there was a chance that she wasn't going to end up with these guys, if she was just going to kill them and move on, I would happily read this book. Uh, it's it's a fun, well-paced read. I like Lucy. I like all her siblings because she's the youngest of seven kids. Uh, I like the town they live in. Um, I like the writing style. But I don't want her to end up with either of these jerks or both of those jerks, right? So um, I cheated and I looked at the description and the book is described as a Romeo and Juliet with a paranormal twist. Ugh. So... Yeah, uh, so so I'm noping out of this one. But if you like happily ever afters and jerks who turn into romantic interests, then check it out. You get you get three books plus a novella. It's a good deal. Next we have a Brute Force by Lizzie Beck Beckwin, a standalone romance novel of sex with an alien with a guaranteed happy ever after ending. The author has several books in the same genre up on her Amazon author page if you like her writing. And her, her writing is, is fine, it's readable, but the premise kind of grosses me out. The whole forced sex with an alien kind of thing. Even the title, Brute Force, is just kind of creepy. So anyway, the story is, is that uh, these human colonists have come to a planet called Zanridia ages ago, and they settled in, but there were locals living on this planet, aliens, called the Dugorim. And these aliens are considered to be like just animals by the humans. And they're big, and they're muscular, and they're, they have a leathery skin, and um, apparently... They haven't been communicating much with each other, and there's just been a war on. And the main um, uh, protagonist, uh, Biorinda, became the queen uh, 10 years, 10 days ago when her father died. And her father was the previous king, and he was killed in a war with the Dugorim. And her first act as queen is to start, initiate diplomatic relations with the Dugorim. She says that they've been fighting this war long enough. That's a strong premise. I like her as a character. It's a good beginning. Um, and uh, her uh, stepmother, um, who's barely, just barely older than uh, she is, is really pissed at this. She's like, oh, your father died fighting these creatures. And even her husband doesn't support her. But which is to be expected. It's a political marriage. They don't really like each other. Uh, they haven't, they've never even slept together. And she's hoping they never will because he's a jerk. And that night, uh, she's kidnapped out of her bed. Um, apparently, uh, by her stepmother and by her husband, working together with the head of the military. And uh, they throw her into the dungeon. Um, and, uh, in the cell next to her, there's a naked Dugorim. And then the sexy stuff starts in right away. So, um, uh, it's extremely sexy. Uh, and, but as it turns out, phew, Florinda isn't totally unwilling, uh, about, like, what happens next. But still, just a warning, this, this is, this is a porn novel, basically, uh, with a, a slight plot uh, thread to kind of hook, tie the sex scenes together. Um, but yeah, it's it's readable um, and uh, it's free. And if you need something this weekend that is told from both the male and the female point of view and is extremely explicit, check it out. Next is a book that I was surprised to see on this list. The Eight Mistakes of Amy Maxwell by Heather Belog. The first book in the five book Amy Maxwell series of cozy mysteries. And as far as I can tell, there's nothing magical or science fiction-y about this story. It's more like a chiclet kind of, kind of book. 
So uh, the other books are a dollar to five dollars each, and the entire series is in Kindle Unlimited. So if you like this, and hundreds of people do, you've got a whole section of books ahead that you can read if you're in Kindle Unlimited. So um, in the prologue, Amy does say that she lives in her own fantasy world and has a hard time telling the difference between what's real and what she imagined. So maybe that's why Amazon put it in this category. Uh, so the book starts out with uh, the prologue where she's hogtied to a chair on a desolate mountaintop in a deserted cabin and her life is flashing between her eyes. And she's remembering the eight mistakes that she made that got her to this spot. Then uh, the first chapter begins with um, her husband dead, her kids crying, the ambulance is on its way, and the, the paramedics show up, and the hot par paramedic takes her into his arms, and we find out that's all a fantasy. She's fantasizing that her husband dead. Um, it's one of those fantasies she was talking about in the prologue. In fact, Amy's husband's asleep on the couch. She's carrying a laundry basket. There's a toddler crying at her feet. She's got three other kids running around. One of those other kids is, is turning six today. She's been planning a birthday party, cleaning the house. She sent out the invitations, hung the decorations, ordered the food, found a pony, clown, bounce house, made the goodie bags, made a piñata, and her husband's pissed off that she asked him to wash the kid's face. And so, oh, and she forgot to bake the cake for this birthday party and people are coming. So now I know why this book is on a list. It's a horror novel. All right, so I'm not a fan of horror, but in any case, the book is giving me flashbacks to my own marriage and kids. So I'm gonna pass. But it is readable and it is amusing. And if you're looking for something of this type, check it out. Okay, next we have The Curse of Cain by Theophilus, Theophilus Monroe. This is a box set of the first three books of the six book series, The Villocan Asylum of the Magically and Mentally Deranged, which is an urban fantasy series. The other books are two to five dollars each, and the series is in Kindle Unlimited. The, but the fifth and sixth books aren't out yet. They'll be released, uh, one will be released this month, um, at the end of the August, and the other in October, but they're both available for pre-order. So Kane, that's the name of the protagonist, he's 6,000 years old, and he's a werewolf. He's the world's oldest werewolf. And for the past few decades, he's been working as a private psychiatrist in New York City. He literally studied under Sigmund Freud. And in the prologue, he applies for a job as a lead psychiatrist at a New Orleans asylum for the magically and mentally deranged. And he's the literal Cain from the Bible. So he's also the world's first murderer. So the werewolf curse is his punishment for killing his brother. So in the first chapter, uh, he's been at the asylum for a while. And um, he is in a swamp meeting with a pack of werewolves. As the oldest werewolf, Cain is automatically the alpha of the alphas and can dominate them. Okay, so pet peeve, there are no alpha wolves. It's a myth that's been thoroughly debunked. Google it. Um, I'm really annoyed whenever you have alpha wolves showing up, but that's just me. Moving on. So this particular pact was trapped in the swamp for a century in wolf form by magical artifact, which is now gone. So the wolves can turn back into humans and Cain is gonna teach them how to adapt to their new, new human, half human lives. And, uh, um, and while he's out there in the swamp running around with them, they hear the howl of another werewolf. So, I thought this book was going to be about helping this pack adjust to human life, but I guess not, because um, the howl is a new werewolf. Um, the howl is coming from the city, New Orleans. So he takes the pack to the city to find this new wolf, um, and uh, they bring the wolf back with them to the swamp. Uh, he 
wait for him to turn back to human, tell him what's what's happening. He doesn't he has no clue what's going on with him. And uh, uh, and uh, Kane uh, makes him a patient in the asylum so he can get a few days to like stay there while the while the moon is full and like learn how to like survive in this new world. So then I'm thinking, okay, the book is about helping this new guy uh, adapt. Um, but no, no. So the story is that there's a new patient in the asylum, a necromancer who poses a danger to humanity. And if she can't be helped with treatment, then the local voodoo priestess is going to banish her into the void. So what they think is that the necromancer is planning to resurrect the serial killer. The serial killer um, was run out of town by a mob. So when she's brought back to life, the serial killer is going to want her revenge on the residents of the city. And that's going to be bad. So I like the premise of the book. I like the uh, all the time that the author spends on the administrative minutia of of, of the guy's job but it starts really really slowly there's very little tension or conflict in there there's a lot of novelty there's interesting stuff happening all over the place but there don't, don't seem to be any stakes until we finally get to this necromancer uh but the, still the stakes aren't for Kane personally um because if if he can't treat this necromancer woman She's just going to be banished to the void. So he'll be okay either way. So, um, so so it takes time to get going. I might keep reading, though, because the kind of steady pace and the atmosphere is, is kind of nice and soothing. So I, I, I like this book. Okay, next we have uh, The Book of Shadow by Bruce Blake. The first of three books in the Curse of the Unnamed epic fantasy series. The other books are between a dollar to five dollars each, and the series is in Kindle Unlimited. Okay. But the four, uh, third book isn't out yet. It will be released in November, and you can pre order it now. So Alex read this one, and he says that this is good for fans of fantasy fiction um, who like to see a lot of action in the books. And so the book starts out also with a werewolf. This werewolf has lost control and murdered his handler. I guess werewolves have handlers in this world. And now the werewolf is on a run for his life. And, and there's violence in here. So Alex says, if you don't like violence, maybe you won't like this book. So um, a wizard and a knight with a big sword are tracking this werewolf, magically teleport his location, and cut the wolf in half with the knight sword. And that happens right from the start. So Alex says that he likes action-heavy fantasy books, and he enjoyed the first few chapters, and he plans to keep uh, stick with it this weekend. All right. Next, we have uh, By Earth by T. Thorne Coyle. And Coyle has been on this list before. In fact, both Amira and I have read the beginning of this book before. Because um, th this is the first nine books in the Witches of Portland urban fantasy series. And two other books from the same series, the third book by Wind and the fifth book by Moon, have been on this list. And instead of jumping ahead in the series and reading the third or the fifth book, we backtrack to the first book. And we, we wrote those reviews. So, um, so the story is about Cassiel who's a 22-year-old redhead with a nice life, even though, but still she worries all the time. She works at a cafe where uh, her boss is a member of her coven. Oh yeah, Cassiel is a witch. So her power is that she can talk to ghosts and police call her for cases and she's had to testify since she's been, since she turned 14 in murder cases. And the pressure got to be too much, which is why she left her hometown and moved to Portland uh, to work in uh, a cafe. Um, then she sees a vision. There is a tower on fire and a mysterious woman uh, who she thinks is a ghost tells her to go to this tower. 
Then we switch to the point of view of a guy named Joe, who's a plumber in the city. And in his spare time, he rehabs classic homes. His girlfriend's been killed a year and a half ago. And ever since then, he's been having the same nightmare once a month, like clockwork. And uh, the, the book starts a little slowly for my taste. The main characters didn't really grab me. And the rest of the series is not in Kindle Unlimited. Oh, and the other books cost $5 each. That was like, I think I'm going to pass. Um, and uh, Amira Lutfi also says that she's going to pass on this book. Um, so she, she's bored by witchy gatherings. And um, so... Um, she doesn't like mysterious messages from mysterious beings and she doesn't like it when when you have mysterious dreams showing up so she says it's not for her all right next we have restoration by sharon mikeworth an award-winning standalone horror novel and again the author has several other books in the same genre up on her amazon author page links below so again, I'm not a fan of horror, so I'm not the target audience for this book. Uh, but unlike that first horror book on this list, this book starts really, really, really slowly. So Cliff has his, uh, Cliff's wife left him three weeks ago for another man. And so he has um, come to a rusty cabin in a park in the heart of Blue Ridge Mountains. He rented a cabin for a month. It's the start of the off season, so the price is reasonable. And the first day he arrives, he's the only one at the camp. All the other cabins are empty. And uh, there's rangers at the park office, uh, but when they go home for the night, he's all alone. I was like, okay, that's pretty creepy. The nearest store is nine miles away, so he drives out there to stock up on some supplies, picks some, pick some, some liquor, comes home. He walks, checks all the windows and doors to make sure that they, they lock, which sounds creepy, but still nothing happens. The next day, somebody else arrives in the park and invites him over for a beer that night, and Cliff considers it. Meanwhile, he spends the day getting settled in. He rents a canoe, he gets firewood, from the uh, from the park uh, employees who work there, um, he, from the rangers, uh, he gets his uh, wife. He gets the Wi-Fi password to the local Wi-Fi network. He calls his parents. The book moves very very slowly. So uh, even if I wasn't a horror fan, I probably wouldn't read this book because it has such a slow start. Uh, but it's very readable, so I do recommend it uh, for, for that sense. Uh, and if you like kind of slow-paced, slow-build, uh, creepy books, check it out. Finally, we have Nightshade uh, by Michelle Rowan, the first of two books in the Nightshade Urban Fantasy series. The other book is $5 and is in Kindle Unlimited. This is my favorite book cover of all the books on today's list. So I've got high hopes for the story. So Jill is an office temp at an investment firm in a, in a big office building. And she runs out to Starbucks on her coffee break. And she comes back with all the coffee and pastries for herself and for some other employees. And she's in the lobby uh, waiting to get on the elevator. When the door opens and there's a scientist in there in a the lab coat, he works for one of the other companies in the building, a pharmaceutical firm. And the guy's holding a, a syringe in his hand with the cap off. So it's like this pointy needle. And so she's like, well, you know, why don't you leave the elevator so I can get on? But before he, he does, a gunman enters the lobby and the scientist grabs her and grab, holds her by the neck and then stabs her with a syringe just before the gunman shoots him. And uh, she she like freaks out and she tries to run away uh, because there's a guy with a gun shooting at people. 
And the guy with the gun, Declan, chases her down outside the building and catches her. And he's a really bad looking guy. He's got scars and an eye patch. And he refuses to take her to the hospital. And when she passes out, he throws her in his car and starts driving her somewhere. And then uh, he regain she regains consciousness eventually and starts trying to ask him what's going on. And what's going on is that Declan is taking her to see his father, uh, adopted father. Declan is half human, half vampire. And um, Declan has to get an injection every three hours in order to keep from going full on vampire. Uh, and full on vampire means that he gets really angry and he can't be out in the sunlight because his eyeballs burst or something. So what the story is, is that that scientist from the elevator was developing a formula to kill vampires for Declan's dad. But Double crossed him, decided to keep the formula for himself or sell it to the vampires or something. And when Declan shot the guy in the head, the formula died with him, except for what's in Jill's body, which is why he kidnapped her and he's taken her to, to, to see his dad. And he says that he can't take her to a hospital because if he does, she'll just die there. There's nothing anybody can do for her. I'm guessing that Jill will survive since she's the protagonist and her picture's on a cover. And I'm hoping she'll get some fun superpowers. I like this book so far. I'm looking forward to reading the rest of the series. And I'm really, really, really hoping she doesn't get together with Declan. I, I know that the odds are low. People always get together in these books. Why? Why? But anyway... Uh, I'm still looking forward to reading the rest of it. All right. And uh, and again, the links are in the description box below. And uh, also, our book is out, and it's available on Barnes & Noble in both print and electronic form. So you can pick it up uh, on Barnes & Noble, Apple Books, Kobo, and a few other platforms as well. We're still waiting for it to show up on Amazon. It's going to be up on Amazon in print form, not ebook. So we're 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 really excited. We're really excited. It looks gorgeous. All right. Um, okay, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. And um, I love reading these books for you. So I'll see you all next Friday. Well, I won't see you. I guess you'll see me next Friday. Have a good do that. Have a great weekend, everybody. Bye-bye.